Hey guys, this is my first Priory math video. Um, this is the free calculus uh, training camp practice test. So this is like chapter P, right? but we're not on chapter one yet. This is a review, chapter P. And I'm gonna go through with these problems. This is very familiar from Delta, as you know. Um, but here we go. Um, so number one, oh, and also a thing to note is just, you know, this is a snapshot of what the test covers, but it's not necessarily everything the test could cover, and you should be familiar with the delta, right, delta uh, P.1 through P.5 uh, and P.7, and then the notes, okay, those are your main ways to study, so this, this test, those delta, and then the notes, okay. Here we go, express the inequality using interval notation, so we have here, this is inequality notation, we have inter interval notation. So interval notation can be these open brackets or the closed brackets. We use the open brackets when it's less than or greater than, and we use the closed brackets when it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So just know, um, know that how these are connected, right? So I see it there, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, so I'm gonna use the closed brackets. So it's gonna be from negative seven to negative five done okay likewise same thing here it is it's open so i know to use the regular greater than or less than no equal sign so x this is saying that x is going to be uh greater than negative eight and less than infinity and if you just wrote you could just write this instead x is greater than negative eight either of those would be fine okay Simplify the following expression using positive exponents. So to simplify this expression, first thing we're going to do is distribute this 5 to here and do here. So we're going to get five, 3 to the 5th, 3 to the 5th, 3 to the 5th, n to the 20th over 4n to the 6th. So n to the 20th over n to the 6th, we subtract, so that's going to be n to the 14th now on top. And then here we have three to the fifth over three to the, over, over, uh, blah, blah, blah. three to the fifth over four. So what is three to the fifth? Okay, well, if you have a calculator on you, you could use that, but three times three times three times three times three. So that's nine, 27, 81, two, 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 43 so is 243 over 4. 243 is not divisible by 4, so this is going to be our final answer here. Okay. Simplify the following expression using positive exponents. Uh, so same thing here. The top is fine right now. I can't do anything there. The bottom we can distribute. So we can get negative 2, a to the fifth over... 3a to the negative 20. I'm going to take my time here. Um, and so what I'll do is, so the negative 2 or 3, like I can't do anything about that. But what I can do is bring that a to the negative 20 up to the numerator by making it positive. So I can now write it as negative 2, a to the 20, a to the fifth, over 3. And then this altogether is negative 2, a to the 25, over 3 done. Okay, that's it. So if you have a negative exponent in the bottom, we can move it up to the top. Solving for x. So these are hopefully just review kind of from algebra 1 or algebra 2. Um, we are solving for x. We want to get x alone. Let's start by just distributing this negative here and here. We're going to get, take your time guys in the test. Don't rush it. I'm going to give you plenty of time. 8x minus 6x plus 10. That's a common mistake there. Make sure you distribute to both. 8x minus 6x is 2x. 2x minus 10, sorry, 2x plus 10 equals negative 10. Then we'll minus 10 both sides. Negative 20 equals 2x. Negative 10 equals x. I divide 2 by 2. Negative 10 equals x. Um, solve for x. So here we're going to minus 2x, minus 2x, get on one side. And then we at the same time, I'm going to add 39 here add 39 here, 4x equals 32, 
Yes? Uh, and then divide by 4, divide by 4, 8 equals x. Good? Okay. Moving on. 7. A line segment has endpoints negative 2, 2, negative 2, and 6, 4. Plot the endpoints on the coordinate plane below. So this is going to be oh, negative 2, negative 2 here. We're going to just call that A, label it. And then we'll have 6, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4 right here. And so we'll call it B. And so we'll have this right here. Okay. Um, what did it do? B, find the midpoint of the line segment. So you need to know the midpoint formula. Midpoint formula is x1 plus x2 over 2, comma y1 plus y2 over 2. Okay. I mean, I'm going to go ahead up here, just like label them. We're going to call this one x1, this one y1, this one x2. This one a y2. Good to just like take your time, label things, right? So we're going to get negative 2 plus 6 over 2, comma, negative 2 plus 4 over 2. So this is 4 over 2. This is 2, and this is 1. So 2, comma, 1 should be my midpoint. I think it's also like, prudent to like actually plot that here and make sure it makes sense even if I don't ask it it's like okay this is the midpoint does that look like the midpoint yes that looks like the midpoint okay so identify your x1 y1 x2 y2 plug it into the formula get your point look at the point does it make sense yep we're good okay so then for c find the length of half the line segment okay so half line segment so I don't want the full I don't want the full length of this I want the length of half of it. So there's two there's two ways you could do this. One way you could do it is you could find the length of the whole thing, right? And then you could divide that by two. Or since we already found this coordinate here is two comma one, I can just find the length of this or the length of this individually. Does that make sense? So either you could use these two coordinates, get the length of the whole thing, and then divide it by two. Or since we already have this midpoint here, we can just use these two points and get it, okay? So uh, I will do the second method there. So we have, I'm gonna use the points negative two, negative two, and two comma one. And I want the distance between these two, right? So the formula for the distance is, remember, the square root of y2 minus y1 plus, so squared, plus x2 minus x1 squared, okay? So y2 minus y1, let's just go ahead and label these, x1, y1, x2, y2. We're going to get 1 minus negative 2 squared plus 2 minus negative 2 squared, all square rooted. Um, this is 3 squared, this is 9. This is 16. Square rooted, that is the square root of 25, so the answer is 5. Okay? Okay. Alright. Um, moving on. 8, we got some more advanced kind of equations and inequalities here. We're solving this for x, so this one I think was one of the problems that people kind of struggle with most. So I'll take my time with this. The idea of these fractional equations is that first thing we want to do is just get rid of the 12 and the 3 in the denominator. So there are different ways to do that, but the way that I do it is I find the number, the smallest number, that is divisible by both 12 and 3. Because if I multiply the whole thing by 3 right now, it's going to get rid of that, but the 12 will still be there. Right, there will still be a number beneath this fraction, is what I'm saying. And I don't want that. So, okay, so I'm not going to multiply by 3. What about 12? Well, 12 would, would cancel out the 12. And since 12 is divisible by 3, it would also cancel out 3. So that's why I'm going to multiply by 12. So I'm going to put that off to the side. Multiply by number that's divisible by all denominators. Okay, find that number. 
And sometimes you can find you can find that by just multiplying these together as well. And it doesn't have to be the smallest number. It can be any number that's divisible by both of these. So anyway, we're going to multiply by 12 both sides. So I'm going to 12 here, a 12 here, and a 12 here. And then I'm going to simplify that. So I'm going to rewrite that. I'm going to bring out that 12 in front. So it's going to be 12 over 12 times x plus 5 plus 12 over 3 times x plus 7 plus 4 times 12, which is 48. Sorry, equals 48. Okay, so 12 over 12 is just, that's just 1, so it just cancels. x plus 5. 12 over 3 is 4, right? So 4 times x is 4x. 4, 4 times 7 is 28 equals 48. Now we just solve this like a regular equation. Okay, so I'll rewrite it kind of up here. We're going to have x plus 5 plus 4x plus 28 equals 48. That's 5x, I'm combining my terms, plus 33 equals 48, minus 33, minus 33, 5x equals 15, so x equals 3. Okay, we divide by 3 at the end there, right? sorry, by 5 at the end there. Okay, so yeah, this one practices on delta, if you need more help, but that's, um, that's fraction busting, okay? We have an inequality here. So inequalities we solve just the same ways that we solve equalities or um, equations. Um, with one, there's one uh, small difference which may come up in this problem. And if it does, I will I will show you it. So this one, we're just going to distribute that negative five. So we get negative six. Negative five times negative eight is going to be a plus forty b. Negative five times negative five is going to be a forty b. Is that plus 25 is greater than or equal to 6b plus 7? Um, these two will combine to, so it's going to be 40b uh, plus 19 equal, oh, sorry, is greater than or equal to 6b plus 7. And I'm going to like purposefully do this kind of an in a different way to show you an inequality like characteristic. So normally I think what I would do is just minus six B both sides and minus 19, and then we're, we're basically there. But I'm actually gonna do it the other way. I'm gonna do minus 40 B both sides, and you'll see why. And so, and I'll do a minus seven here and a minus seven here. So now I have 12 is greater than or equal to negative 34b. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 34 and negative 34. And here's the characteristic about, about inequalities. When you divide or multiply by negative both sides, you have to flip that inequality. So it's going to change. So it will be b over here now. And 12 divided by negative 34, well, we can simplify that to uh, Six negative six over seventeen, right? Negative six over seventeen. Okay, that's it. All right, number ten. Lot the points negative one, negative two, and three six. Let's go ahead and do that. Negative one, negative two, doop, and three six. One two three. One two three four five six. And we want the slope between these two. So remember that slope m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And I can draw that triangle to kind of help me out here. And if you were like kind of stuck on that, you can see this is 4, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's 8 over 4, so the slope is 2. Okay? So basically what I did here was like, okay, 6 minus negative 2 is 8, and then 3 minus negative 1 is 4, right? So you can do it visually on here, or you can do it with the coordinates here, right? This would be my x1, y1, uh, x2, y2, okay? Uh, write an equation in point-slope form that intersects the two points. So point-slope form Reminder is y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. So in point slope form, we can choose either of these to be our point, but we'll just we'll just keep the negative one, negative two. So it's going to be 
y minus negative 2 equals, I found my slope already, 2 x minus negative 1. That's fine, okay? Um, then below, we want to convert that into slope intercept. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. It's going to be y plus 2 equals 2 x plus 1. It's going to distribute that. So it's going to be y plus 2 equals 2x two plus 2. And then minus 2 both sides. Minus 2, minus 2, y equals 2x. That would be in, in slope intercept form. Okay? So you get, get y alone. That's what D is saying. Get y alone. Okay, and then the last one, we want an equation perpendicular to the one above, and it intersects the point 1, 1. So it gives me a point, and I want perpendicular. So for perpendicular, you need to know that the slope is going to be the negative reciprocal of the original slope. So my new slope is going to be negative 1 half. This is my new slope. And I know it's this point. So once you have a, a, a slope and a point, you can just use the point slope form. So we're going to get y minus 1 equals negative 1 half x minus 1. And we're done. That's it. Because all it doesn't, it doesn't tell me it needs to be slope intercept or anything here. So it's fine. I can just write this equation. I have my point. I put that. This is my x1 and my y1. And then I have my slope from that I got from the original. And I'm good to go. Okay. All right, we're on the last page. Solve for all values of x by factoring. Okay, so when you're solving by factoring, it's important to get, um, to make it equal to zero first. So the first thing we're gonna do here is just minus six x minus six x. We're gonna get x squared minus four equals zero. We're gonna factor this. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to get negative four and they add to get zero, and those two numbers are negative two and two. This is called a difference of squares. So we have x plus two times x minus two equals zero. My solutions are x equals negative two and x equals two. Similar here, we're gonna add three x. We're gonna minus two minus two. So we're gonna get x squared plus seven x equals zero. This one we're not, we're not gonna factor diamond style. We're just gonna take out the greatest common factor here, which is the x. So it's gonna be x, x plus seven, equals zero. So my solutions are x equals zero and x equals negative seven. Okay. 13, 14, and 15. Oh, so 13 is from the previous lesson. 14, 15 are from today. Um, for 13, um, use quadratic formula to solve the following. So quadra okay, same thing. You've got to get it equal to zero first, so we're going to do that, so 15z squared do, 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 minus 2z minus 1, and then we're going to do the quadratic formula, so again it's x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so we're going to have x equals Two, right, so my a is 15, the b is negative 2, and my c is negative 1. Okay, uh, is 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 4ac, so it's going to be. Uh, so negative one, so negative four, and then negative 60. So it's going to be plus 60 over 30. Okay. Um, so that's two plus or minus the square root of 64 over 30. So we're going to have, uh, that's eight, right? So it's going to be 10 over 30 and negative six over 30. Those are my so x equals one third and x equals negative one fifth. Okay, that is the quadratic formula. 
okay? So you just know the quadratic formula and plug it in. That's it. And if it, um, it'll end up clean at the end, okay? If it didn't end up clean, you could leave it in, in an irrational form. Like if this wasn't a perfect square, you could write it as two separate solutions here. Okay. Um, 14, it solves the inequality algebraically, so it's an absolute value. The steps are, we're going to take that equation, we're going to set it equal to 6, we're going to take that equation, we're going to set it equal to negative 6, we're going to solve, we're going to get x equals 11, and x equals negative 1. And then we're going to think about this on a number line, so we're going to have sort of negative 1 here, and... 11 over here and the question is it's going to be one or two it's either going to be here or it's going to be on the on the edges now i want it to be less than six so if i was plug in a 12 over here into this 12 minus 5 is 7 so that doesn't work this area does not work if you plug in something below negative 1 like negative 2 that's negative 2 minus 5 is negative is this is also going to not work right but if we plug in like a zero something in between it does work. So this is my region from here to here. So my answer would be negative 1 uh, to 11, right? Or you could write x uh, less than 11, but greater than negative 1. Okay. Similar for the last one, 15, solve of inequality algebraically, so we're going to set it equal to 0 and get our zeros, x minus 4x minus 5 equals 0. Factors are x, um, x minus 5 and x plus 1. And my solutions are x equals 5 and x equals negative 1. So again, like, you can kind of do the number line and do, okay, this is going to be a 5 right here. This is going to be a negative one right here. And so the question is, okay, well, if I plug in a six into this, right, is it bigger than zero? Well, 36 uh, minus 24, minus half, so that's 36 minus 29, yeah, that's bigger than zero. So this is good. Plug in something between negative one and five, plug in a zero into this. If you plug in a zero, you get negative five. That's not greater than zero. This is not good right? Plug in something less than negative 1, um, like a negative 5, right? You're going to get um, 25 plus 20 minus 5. That's bigger than 0, so this is going to work. All right, so my answer is negative infinity to negative 1 or 5 to infinity. Okay, and that's it. So if you have any questions, I have office hours Wednesday after school. Um, and then if you, yeah, if you want to stop by another time, you can shoot me an email. Okay. All right, guys. Good luck.